Hey everyone, this is a review of the Wahuda Tools 8 inch benchtop joiner. I've been in the market looking for a joiner for a while and I'm going to go over why I decided on this one uh, and then what I like about it and what I don't like about it. We're also going to go over some setup tips uh, that should help you get yours dialed in if you decide to go with this style of joiner. And they also have a 6 inch model for a little bit less if you're interested in that as well. It should be pretty much the same setup though. Alright, so the three main reasons I picked this joiner is one, price. I paid $550 for this, which I think for the quality, it's a pretty good deal. Um, there weren't many benchtop joiners in that price range, plus being an 8-inch joiner, uh, it kind of set it apart. Um, number two, it's got cast iron outfeed and infeed tables, uh, which most joiners in this class have cast aluminum, uh, which aren't going to be as stable, uh, aren't going to be quite as as nice. Uh, and then the third one was the spiral carbide cutter head. Uh, instead of having straight knives all the way across, uh, it has indexable ones that you can flip them four different times if they get worn out or nicked, as opposed to a knife where you might have reversible knives that you can flip once, um, but then if anything along that whole width gets a nick in it, you're out of luck, you've got to replace it. So next we'll start off with a tour around the joiner of controls, things you're going to use, and how to make adjustments to it. All right, so up front we've got the on-off switch. It does have a removable lock on it that it won't turn on without that, uh, which is good because this is one of the most dangerous tools in the shop. So if you've got kids that might be out in the garage or the shop, uh, that's a nice safety feature. Um, over here is the table lock, and then here is the ta in-feed table up-down adjustment. You just turn this knob and the whole thing rides on two rails inside here and goes up and down and then you can lock it in place once you've got it at the desired height. You've got a depth gauge um, from zero to one eighth of an inch which is the max cut dip depth for this. On this side over here you've got your four inch dust port. It does come with an accessory to neck down to two and a half inches. I've got a Rockler dust right attached to this already so this this portion right here doesn't come with it but it's got a, the four inch standard dust port. Uh, to attach to. Uh, it comes with these two uh, push blocks. I've got my own that are a little bit bigger, a little bit nicer. It comes with the necessary Allen keys to adjust everything, as well as a Torx key to index the cutter heads. Right here you'll notice you've got the extension wings. They pop out another 11 inches off the end of the table. The tables are 14 and a half inches about uh, long each. Uh, and the total bed is 30 and a half inches length. One thing to note when I first got this, these were almost impossible to move. They're still really difficult to. I probably just need to grease them and move them in and out more. It's already gotten a little bit better than it was initially, but it's still a pain to move these in and out. So these extension wings, they're a nice feature to have if you don't have time to set up an in-feed or an out-feed extension table. What I'm probably going to do is build a workstation for this and just forget these bars and build some melamine platforms out here that are perfectly level with the table and then just forget about these. Then once you've got these out at the length that you want them, you can tighten this little set screw right here and it keeps them from moving back and forth. On the back here is your belt drive going from the 10 amp motor to the cutter head. The cutter head turns at 12,000 RPM. Uh, up here is your fence adjustments. You've got levers that turn to loosen. It's just a single point contact but it all rides on a rail that clamps it down fairly well and fairly sturdily. Um, and then you just turn it back down. If you get stuck and one of these kind of runs into the others, you can pick these up and index them and then turn them. These are some of the only plastic parts on the entire thing. Um, both these adjustment levers are. So everything else, I just about everything else is metal. These do feel a little bit flimsy, but so far they're working just fine. This one up top is for adjusting the angle of your fence. Uh, it adjusts up to 45 degrees and there's a stop for both 90 and 45 degrees up here that you can adjust. Um, I'm gonna leave mine at 90 degrees pretty much 100% of the time. Uh, so I don't really plan on messing with that too much, um, but it's it's pretty easy to deal with. And of course on the top right here you've got your safety guard that is spring-loaded to return over the cutter head. Um, so when, once you finish the workpiece going past, this keeps you from sticking your hand into the blade like an idiot. Alright, setting up your joiner to be accurate is the most important step you're going to do with all of this. Um, because if you don't have this table perfectly aligned with the cutter head, uh, and then if you don't have the in-feed table perfectly coplanar with the out-feed table, you're not going to get good results. Um, and your whole purpose of this is getting flat stock out of it. It's the whole purpose of this tool. And if you don't have flat tables, you're not going to get anything worthwhile. 
Um, so to do this, I recommend, I, I tried to set this up initially and I had it within three and a half thousandths flat and level with the whole thing. That was not good enough. Uh, I went back, I was not getting good results. I went back and did within one thousandths of an inch for front to back of all of the tables and everything. Uh, and I was started getting excellent results with this. So to do this, you're gonna need a few tools. Um, you're gonna need both of the Allen keys uh, that come with the joiner. Uh, you're going to need a set of feeler gauges. Uh, if you don't have a set of these, I'll put a link in the video description to Amazon. They're pretty cheap. You can usually get them for under 10 bucks. Uh, and then you'll need a large flathead screwdriver. And you will need a very, very flat reference edge. So I've got a nice level that's got really good references. It's actually magnetic on this side, and I don't recommend you use a magnetic level. You want one without magnets, so use the side that's not magnetized. Uh, and I checked this against another level of similar quality, and it is perfectly flat. You can do that by putting them together and moving them along and, and then flipping them over and doing the same thing. Uh, and this one is perfectly flat, as was the other level I used to set this up. So that's important because if the level, the reference edge you're not using is flat, uh, is not flat, you're not gonna get a flat surface out of this. All right, so setting this up, the tables themselves are almost perfectly flat. Uh, if you put a level here um, and then across, and across it's good on the back edge of that one and the front edge of this one, there is a one and a half thousandths dip from the front to the back. And these are the same part number. They're just flipped 180 degrees around. So I think it's their manufacturing process. So I would think, unless it's a weird batch problem they had, all of the tables will have that one and a half thousandths dip in them. It didn't seem to affect my jointing with this. I did up to a six and a half inch board with this so far. Uh, no problems with it. It wasn't noticeable, but there is a slight imperfection in their manufacturing process because both these tables have the same dip on one side, but not the other. The other side is perfectly flat. This one is not. So to get started adjusting this, you take the guard off first. It's just the larger of the Allen keys. You loosen these two screws and it's got some keyhole slots. So you just pick the whole thing up and pull it out and it comes off. Those are the two screws it was sitting on. So after you've got your cutter guard off, the first thing you're gonna do is adjust this front edge to be perfectly level with the tops of the cutter. So at the apex of the, when the cutter rotates around, you want this table to be perfectly level with that. So to do that, you get your straight edge and you wanna set it here. You wanna lower this infeed table out of the way. So get it lower than the outfeed table because you're just dealing with the outfeed table right now. So then you take this little small Allen key, it shows in the user manual sticking in here. There is no Allen key spot. There's no hex spot there, but there's a hole through the shaft you can use to rotate it. So do that. Um, you can see as I move this past, it moves my level. It does not really pick it up though. So there's, there shouldn't be any pickup. It should touch it and contact it, but it shouldn't lift it up off the table. Um, so you can go back and forth doing this um, and adjusting at the four adjustment spots to get everything perfectly level across the front. That's really the measurement that matters is perfectly even across this front because you can adjust the fence if you get this whole thing tilted a little bit. It just has to be perfect with the cutter head and the cutter head is not adjustable. So you adjust everything else to the cutter head. To adjust this table, uh, if you want to tilt it, you do, you, you remove these screws and then inside there, you use a flathead screwdriver to turn the adjustment screws. Clockwise brings the table up, counterclockwise brings it down. Um, and I suggest no more than a quarter turn ever for the adjustment screws inside there. It moves it quite a bit. Um, by the time I was down to adjusting like one or two thousandths of an inch up and down, I was turning it like a 30 second of a turn or less. It was just a few degrees. So, so it's, it's, you don't really have to turn them multiple times. Don't do that. Just, I would say if it's really far out, start with a quarter turn and that's then sneak up on it from there. Um, another thing is do not take all four of these screws out at once because that is all that's holding the table on. So I made that mistake. It started tilting on me and I realized what I had done. Um, but I would suggest only taking two out at a time. Uh, and when you do that, if you, if you take two out at a time, you're adjusting about the other screws. So it's pivoting about this point. So if you want to bring this up, take these two screws out, 
and then you can adjust this side. Just know that it's gonna bring this side on this edge down a little bit because it's not gonna move about this point. It's gonna pivot about this line between these two fasteners. So keep that in mind. I would only ever adjust two of these at once. If you wanna bring the front up, take these two out. It's gonna pivot about this. It will drop the back of this table over here. It will drop that down when you raise these up. So just keep in mind that's gonna happen for everything, if you need to raise all of them up, do two at a time, keep track of how much you raise them, and then do the other two. All right, so once you've got the outfeed table lined up with the cutter head, that first lip of the outfeed table perfectly parallel with it, you're gonna work on the infeed table, and you've gotta get the whole thing coplanar with the outfeed table. So all we learned, cared about on this one was this front edge. On this one, we've gotta get everything lined up. So to do that, put your level, this is a four foot level, and I've got just the edge over here over the edge of the, the infeed table, and I've got everything else back that way, and I'm gonna push down over here and make sure all the weight is on the outfeed table, and we're gonna skim under here with our feeler gauges and get readings for each corner on the front and the back. And so I've already done this, mine is level, so we're gonna see, I cannot fit the one and a half inch feeler, or one and a half thousandths feeler gauge pretty much anywhere. It slides in under a little bit on this one, and it's a little bit snug. Um, I don't think I'd be able to get the two thousandths under there. You take readings at each of these corners, and you adjust two at once, two of these screws at once, and remember, they're gonna pivot about the line on the other two screws that you are adjusting. So if you want this edge to go up a little bit, undo these two screws, turn both of these clockwise, and the back edge is gonna drop a little bit, so keep that in mind. You might have to bring these ones up too in a second operations after you've tightened these back down. Um, so it's a little bit tedious because you gotta loosen these, pull out the washers and the screws, and then tighten them back down afterwards, and then check again, um, because you get a little bit of compressive force that's gonna hold the table down a little bit better than you can just push down on it. Um, so it's a lot of unscrewing and then retightening those screws over and over again. It's a little bit of a tedious process, but once you get it dialed in, uh, you shouldn't have to mess with it. All right, now that we've covered the table setup and how to get those level, let's talk about the extension wings. Um, these are just steel rods that come out and they've got, on the end here, they've got some adjustment that you can make it parallel with the table uh, and the same height. Uh, to do that, you loosen these screws right here, and then you've got some cams that you can adjust this bar up and down. It works fairly well to get it adjusted. Um, that's not the hard part. The hard part is getting it tightened back down and keeping it level. Because every time I try to tighten this back down, this bar goes out of alignment with the platform again. So it's nearly impossible to get these perfectly level with your platform. It's better to have them a little bit lower than a little bit higher, obviously, um, if you're dealing with work pieces that get out to the 11 inch extension range. Um, but these things are just a nightmare to get level with the platform because once you're done adjusting them, they're going to move when you tighten them back down. All right, let's talk accuracy. I've done quite a few different boards through this. Um, the widest one I've done is six and a half inches. Uh, it was a piece of walnut. This got it as flat as I could tell. Uh, checking afterwards, I couldn't find any spot on it that wasn't flat. I put it on my table saw table. It was perfectly flat. Um, so that was roughly a 20 inch long piece, six, inch, six and a half inches wide uh, of walnut. Uh, did great on that. It was a little bit slow going with such a wide cut. I was doing a little bit less than a 16th of an inch off of that one, um, but it handled it pretty well. I didn't feel like it was underpowered. It was just a little slow going. I've also done some longer boards on this. Uh, really, the, the thing that you'd be guaranteed to get straight is a 28 inch board um, because that's, that's double the length of the infeed table. And that's what I've been seeing. I've been getting about 30 inches right around there of perfectly straight section in my longer boards. Uh, and then I've got a little bit bow if I do something longer than that. Uh, I did some six foot tall cedar fence pickets. I edge jointed those and I got about 25 thousandths of an inch of bow um, in the center from one end to the other, which I was actually able, since it's a thin board, uh, it's a little bit wide of a board, it's a you know five and a half inch wide board, but I was able to push it down fairly easily and remove that bow out of it. So I'm really confident if I was clamping that for glue up, I'd be able to clamp the bow out of that for 25,000. So if you're dealing with thicker boards or wider boards, it might not be possible, um, but for smaller ones, it's definitely gonna be possible to clamp out 25,000. 
So, so far I'm pretty happy with this thing. Uh, it's, it's performed well for what I've tried to use it for. Um, I haven't done a ton of work through it yet uh, so far, but for the, the test pieces I've done and the little projects I've done so far, it's done very well. Uh, I do plan on improving the accuracy by getting rid of those extension wings and adding some support tables, in-feed, out-feed tables uh, for this so I can increase the capacity uh, of stock that I can get flat through this. But so far, 25 thousandths of an inch is pretty good for six feet, considering that the, the in-feed, out-feed table are quite a bit shorter than that. All right, let's talk price point. This model, the 8-inch, is $550, uh, and I think that's a fantastic deal for the level of quality you're getting with this. You're getting the carbide cutter head, you're getting a cast iron tabletop, and I think the quality that this has uh, is, is pretty good for that price point. And if that's still a little bit too high, the 6-inch model, uh, is, you know, just a little bit smaller capacity, is $400. Uh, so it's quite a bit off the price tag, and I would expect the same level of quality from, from that tool as well. So hopefully this review is helpful. Let me know if you have any questions about setup, uh, other joiner questions. I'm fairly new to joining though. Um, so I'm learning as I go, and this is kind of a, a beginner's take on getting the tools set up and how user-friendly this is for an absolute beginner, because honestly, most people buying a benchtop joiner are probably beginners at joining. Uh, so if you, if you notice me doing something wrong in this video, I would love to hear your critiques. Uh, if you've got some tips on how to use joiners a little bit more efficiently and get, get a better straight edge out of them, I'd love to hear them. Also drop those in the comments. Uh, so don't forget to subscribe, and once again, thanks for watching.